everyone, my name's Alex and welcome back to my channel. So this week has already started off very interesting for us and I'm still kind of in disbelief and shock even though it's been a day after we found all this out. So yesterday was August 20... 20-something. 20 Hold on. August 25th. I had to look at the... the vet paperwork. So we've been needing to decide which puppy we need to say goodbye to, whether it was Coggy or Lucian. So we did a final assessment on Kage and we wanted to get one for Lucian too to see how bad his liver disease is, like how, how fast it's progressing. So I took him in yesterday and we did a full blood work panel on him, like a whole canine chemistry, check everything kind of thing. And the vet walks into the exam room and she tells me he's almost completely back to normal. Like completely healthy. Like she could have walked into that exam room and did this. And I would have totally understood what she meant. <laughs> like, I just, we don't understand how. We don't understand why. Like, it just, it doesn't make sense. Like, for the past seven months, I've been agonizing over having to say goodbye to him soon. Like, he was diagnosed with chronic liver failure. Like, all the things pointed to it. All, everything in the blood work said that that's what was happening. You know, we did ultrasounds. We did other tests and more blood work and we can never find the cause at all like I mean this dog had jaundice like jaundice is an advanced stage or advanced symptom of liver disease and once they have jaundice it's not curable it's treatable and you can get rid of it if you find the cause and we never found the cause I mean Lucian went into that vet office like a lit up neon sign. I mean, he was that yellow, like eyes, ears, like all his skin, gums, like, I mean, he was bright freaking yellow. I, I really think he is either doing some sort of sorcery or like Harry Potter school type thing or eating magic cookies. Maybe the cookies I give him are magical or he found something in the yard. Like, I'm just, I'm so, I'm so happy, but I'm like, so, I, I'm just in dis, I'm disbelief. So one of his liver levels is actually still really high. It's uh, five times higher than it's supposed to be, but it's still not as high as it actually was. But every other level, totally normal and perfect. He's not anemic, doesn't have diabetes. Like she pressed, like his liver's not enlarged anymore. There's no sign of the jaundice anymore at all. Now sometimes when I walk him for short walks, I do see like a very light tinge of yellow in his eyes, but it goes away like within a couple hours. The look in my vet's eyes, because I couldn't see her whole face, <laughs> like, because we're all, you know, masked up, but it was kind of like the same as mine, like, what do you mean? Like, you know, like, we just, we don't understand. So this is like really good news for our family, like, because, you know, we're not losing, we're not going to be losing two like we thought, but it's still very like, well, what, what, what changed, you know? So I kept asking my vet, like, how, what, why this, why that? And she, I don't know. I don't know. That was, that was the answers. I don't know. It just, it happens. So we kind of concluded that it's just magical cattle dog syndrome. Like that's what he has, you know, cause you know, cattle dog tough, you know, he's so tough. He just was like, nope, I'm going to heal this on my own or something. It's just, it's, it's just kind of crazy. I mean, I picked out his urn. Like I, I just, I don't know. I'm so like happy and grateful that he's magically better, but he's not out of the clear yet. There is a slight chance that there's something going on with his gallbladder and with his liver, like together, like which caused something. There's, there, there is that chance. The only way of finding out anything now, since all tests have already been done and everything, is to actually put him under for surgery and cut him open and just fish around in there and see what we can see. I'm not doing that to my dog. Like that's just not happening. I'm not, it's not worth it to me just to cure my curiosity or whatever. If he's stable, which is where he's at, that's that's fine with me. Originally when he was first diagnosed with it, me and my vet both kind of agreed that either one, it is age related or gen genetic, like because he is almost 10. He, he's actually going to make it to his 10th birthday now. So that, okay, no, we're not going to talk about that. I'll start crying. This is not a crying video today. But the other thing we thought of was it was the Rimadyl. Now Rimadyl is a very popular medication used to treat pain in, in dogs. And I, for short-term use, I think it's perfectly safe and fine. Um, I was warned when Lucian had to be on it for a really long time for his one leg. 
I was warned that it can cause liver and kidney damage. And we tested him every six months like you're supposed to do if your dog is on Rimadyl for an extended long period of time like that. But he had been off the Rimadyl for I think a year and a half because I we had felt that his leg was better and that he didn't need to keep taking it. And you know, within that year and a half time period, we were still testing his liver even though he was off the Rimadyl because he's had he had slight elevated levels and then they got worse and then they got into like the holy crap how is this dog functioning level you know and then and then all this stuff happened this year so it's been like almost like a two-year process watching and and keeping an eye on things to make sure that you know is it getting better is it getting worse and i mean it got worse like really bad now he does have some aggression issues lately um he's very snappy doesn't want to be bothered on certain things so we're not sure if that's the pain still he's having in his legs because not only does he have the one torn leg, he has two torn legs. So we're not sure if the pain's making him a little bit snappy. We don't know if it's behavioral or not. We don't know if he's um, kind of being more anxious and overprotective because of how Kagi's dementia is affecting the pack. You know, that stuff we'll figure out. For right now, we know he's just, he's staying with us. He. I don't have to say goodbye to him anytime soon. So I am so sorry I put you all through my pain <laughs> from my previous videos on both of them. But I just I just had to share that he's magically magically better. Just cattle dog tough. Like they're so stubborn they want to stay with us forever too, I think. So but it's just really good news for us considering that you know everything else is kind of not so good news lately. And uh yeah, I, I couldn't be more happier. So we just have to work on a couple things. And we also have new medication for him to try for his legs because he can't be on the Rimadyl anymore because that will affect his current uh, liver state anyway. Even, even though everything else is better except for that one level, it could still affect it and we don't want that. He's on more of a holistic medicine. I think it's called, hold on, Tramel? Tramel. Tramil. I don't know. It's a new medication, so it's supposed to help with his legs, and I need to make sure his legs are better, not only for him to not feel pain and, and you know, help his joints and stuff, but he gained five pounds. So I've got to get his legs better and get him walking a little bit longer, and yeah, so things will be okay. Like, this is, this is all good, but I'm still going to keep an eye on him. So I guess if I had any more advice, especially on this situation, is sometimes miracles happen. And as my vet said, sometimes the blood work doesn't match what they're showing, and sometimes what the dog's showing doesn't match the blood work. And this is, we were all in shock. We're still in shock. We, uh, it's kind of hard to not still be processing it because for, when you've been processing it for so long that you're having to say goodbye, and then all of a sudden it's like, no, you don't have to, it's fine. It's like, okay, <laughs> so like, it's like, thank you for that information, but holy crap, like, you know, they're creepy. Creepy, magical cattle dogs who apparently heal themselves. I just wanted to give a huge, huge thank you to all the love and support that I received on the video that I did with Lucian. Ah, oh, I can't even say the thank you. No crying, no crying video. I just wanted to give a huge thank you to everybody for all your messages, like the love and support and the advice and just talking me through the stuff because, you know, when you get to this stage, with your dogs, with any pet, it is so hard. And just having you, man, having you guys there, I didn't know how much I needed it. So, and, and this is great news. So, but you know, unfortunately we still have the other stuff with Kage, but I just can't thank you enough for all the comments and messages and everything and the support. I, I'm just, I'm blown away because I didn't, and not just because of how much I didn't realize I needed that kind of support during this, but just how people can come around together is always just amazing to me. So, ha, huh, no crying. Hmm, no crying. <laughs> so, anyway, thank you guys so, so much for watching, and again, for all your support. Remember to click all the buttons, click the bell, and uh, I'll see you next time. You're gonna be 10 soon. Yeah, you're gonna be 10. Yeah, you are. You are. <laughs> Gypsy. You're sticking around, buddy. Yeah, you're sticking around, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Clea. Quit it. <laughs>
thief. <laughs> easy, easy, kiss my hand. Yeah, mommy had a boo boo this week. Yeah, good boy, good boy. That's it, no more, no more. I know you think I'm lying because the bag's on the floor, but no, come on.